This is the second video describing the process of working with grids and with levels in setting up a project. In the first video I showed you how to create a bunch of uh, grids using the copy or array methods and to place some uh, columns and beams. In this video we're going to revisit columns and levels in the project and how you can uh, customize them to display to your liking. First off, let's take a look at the endpoints of the grids. If you select on any one of the grid points, you'll notice that there are grips on either end uh, with dashed lines that show other grid endpoints that they're constrained to and lock symbols showing that constraint. First off, let's click the, the lock symbol, unlocking it, and that would allow us to take one grid line and change its three-dimensional extent in plan. Simply dragging that back into alignment with the others reestablishes the constraint and you can drag all of those connected grid lines together. Second piece to look at is a little checkbox that exists at the end of either one of the grids. This turns the symbol on at the end. You can do that for any one of the grid lines in any case. Now what if we globally wanted to turn all the grid lines from the left side to the right side for the lettered grids or from the top side to the bottom side for the numbered grids. There are default display parameters in the type properties of each grid. If we select a grid, go to the element properties, pull down and go directly to type properties, we'll see that we have plan view symbols at N1 and plan view symbols at N2. This is basically a function of how you're drawing the grid line in the first place. The first pick is N1, and obviously the second pick is N2. If we check both options and click OK, you'll see that all grids of that type show the bubbles at both ends by default. Let's undo that and say we have well, these grids were drawn from bottom to top and right to left, thus giving us the grid lines at the end two. If we wanted to swap that out and say, well, no, I really want them at, at uh, end one, Again, we go to select one, type properties, change the option from N2 to N1, and you'll see that they have switched from being at the left and top to being at the right and bottom. Now, in our, the layout of our building requires that grid lines five and six are not shown at the upper levels of a project. How can we accomplish that? Let's go up to level four. And one very simple way is to go in every floor plan, select these grids, right click and use the hide and view option elements. This solves the problem for one view at a time, which is not very efficient. Let's go to an elevation view. Let's go to the south elevation, which happens to be perpendicular to grid lines five and six. It's this elevation here. Here are grid lines five and six. Now, the three-dimensional extents that we demonstrated in plan have the same uh, same operating properties in elevation. If we select a grid, unconstrain it from the other grids, and stretch it down below level three and level four, and do the same for grid number five. When we return to floor plan 3 or floor plan 4, we'll see that those grids are no longer there. And that will be consistent no matter how many copies of the floor plan you have without having to manually turn off those grid lines. Now let's take a look at creating more levels. Let's say we needed to add on five more levels to this project. There are several different ways of doing this. Each has pros and cons. First off, you can go to the Home tab and use the Level tool. The benefit of using this approach is that you can have the option to automatically create the plan views. A neat trick that I found out recently is that if you hover near the endpoint of some other reference object and you get that temporary dimension as you're placing it, you can type in what the offset value is. Let's say this new, new level wants to be 15 feet above the previous one. I'm hovering my mouse near the endpoint, and I'm just typing 15, enter. And then as I draw to the left, that grid line is 15 feet above. 
and it has my level 5 floor plan created with it as well. Now the other ones, I could let's say I needed to make 20 stories, that would be a more arduous task to do that one at a time. I can always use my copy tool. I'm going to select the level, go to the copy tool, make sure I have multiple selected, and I'm going to start, pick a start point and just continue copying up. Six, seven, and eight now exist. Notice that I do not have level six, level seven, or, nor level eight as floor plans. That's because Revit does not allow you to automatically create plans uh, or other associated views when you're copying levels. But it's easy enough to create them. Let's go to the View tab, select on Plan Views, Floor Plan, and this will show you the levels for which you do not have floor plans already created. That's because of this handy dandy do not duplicate existing views option. If you did want to create copies of the views you already have, simply uncheck that box and highlight all of the floors you want to create plans for. I'll create plans for level 7 and level 8 using my control key. Now just be aware that as you use that tool to create the floor plans, they automatically open in Revit's uh, interface. So let's close level 8 and level 7 and return to our elevation view. Last way I'll show you is simply using the array tool. Same rules apply as the copy tool in that you cannot automatically generate the plans, but we can I just show you how to do that. With the level selected, I'm going to go to the array tool. And remember with grids and levels, you don't want to use the group and associate option. It's nice for other objects, but creates trouble with with uh, Revit project datum. In this case maybe we'll create 10 more levels and let's say move to second because we're going to specify the distance between each object. Click once, point up in the direction you want the array to uh, to propagate and type in a value. This time I'm going to say 13 space 6 for 13 feet 6 inches. Enter and we have our levels created. Now, if you created your grids first and your level second, you're going to have to remember to take your grids and stretch those extents up to have those show on every level. Lastly, let's take a look at modifying the ends of the grid of the levels. Very similar to the grids, we have the dragging the extents. Turn the label on, turn the label off. If you look closely at the level though, you'll see it has a break mark also. If you have levels that happen to be very close to each other, you can use that break symbol. And then use the grips that appear afterwards to adjust and customize that symbol.